Two New York Islanders players were finalists at the NHL Awards last night in Nashville. We'll talk about what happened there, that and a possible blockbuster trade and a lot more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Tuesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. And you can also now hear us on SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just do a search for Locked On Islanders. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. We've got a lot to discuss on today's show, but first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question for us, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, feel free to send us an email at Locked On Islanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we will mention you on the show when we discuss your question, comment, or suggestion. And we are going to answer one of those questions later on in today's show. Uh, you could also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Isles, and you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news notes and happenings. Hirings, firings, trade rumors, free agency, the draft, you name it, we've got it covered for you right here on the Locked on Islanders podcast. So in Nashville last night, the NHL awards held just before the draft, big uh, event there in Music City, and they certainly did it in style, and look, I, I... I'm not a big fan of award shows, particularly. I just want to know who won and maybe hear a couple of seconds of, you know, some really good speeches from the winners if there is a particularly poignant moment. And there were one or two uh, in Nashville for sure. But as an Islander fan and someone who covers this team, you know, my focus predominantly was on the two Islanders players who were up for awards and the King Clancy award for, you know, dedication to the community and giving back and, and, and all of that. Anders Lee, the Islanders captain was a finalist for that award. He does not win it. Michael Backlund of the Calgary flames wins, but you know, I'll say this just to be one of the three finalists is an honor. It means that, Money will be donated to the charity uh, that Anders Lee is supporting. So I think that makes it a definite positive right there. And you just tip your hat to Anders Lee because, you know, not winning is not the point. The fact is that Backland got it. Darnell Nurse was the other finalist, but $5,000 given to Anders Lee's charity. And that is certainly, you know, worthwhile. Wish the NHL would up the dollar amounts, but that's a different issue. Doug Waite and Brian Trottier won those awards Wait back in 2011 when he was with the Islanders. Trottier in 1989. But... Look, uh, we know and we've talked about the Jam Cancer in the Can charity that Anders Lee definitely uh, has done a great job of representing and raising money for. And, you know, the, the fact that it was based on his relationship with the late Fennel Pierre-Louis who had stage four neuroblastoma and, you know, he's unfortunately been gone now 
for five years almost at the age of 17 and and just to help kids with cancer and people with cancer is a, a fantastic thing and you know by making fenov scholarships to high school seniors who have provided help and sympathy to people with cancer i i think that is just a great cause so even though he did not win the award congratulations to anders lee and really a, a tip of the hat for all that he does in the community and for that charity it is worthwhile and definitely deserves our support and congratulations. The other Islanders player who was up for an award, Ilya Sorokin, one of three finalists for the Vesna. And uh, no surprise here, but Linus Olmark of the Boston Bruins ends up winning the award. Now, basically, uh, Sorokin did come in second, just ahead of uh, Connor Hellebuck of the Winnipeg Jets out of the, uh, you know, 32 teams. So there's one vote, you know, per team. Omar got 22 out of the 32 first place votes. Sorokin got three, which was the second highest total. And he got 17 second place votes, which was far and away. I mean, more than triple the next nearest uh, players in second place votes. So 127 points in the voting for Olmark, 70 points for Sorokin, 32 for Hellebuck. And look, I, I can honestly say that Olmark was going to win this award. We know it. Only one Islander has ever won it, and that's Hall of Famer Billy Smith, who captured it back in 1981 82 so it's now been oh wow 41 years since an islander has won the vezina and sorokin the first finalist for the isle since robin laner back in 2019 so four years ago not quite that long of a, of a wait but realistically olmark was first in the league in wins first in goals against average first in save percentage Sorokin was first in shutouts. And look, as Islander fans who watched Ilya Sorokin game in and game out, we know how valuable he was to this team. We know the Islanders don't even sniff the playoffs without the outstanding goaltending they got from Sorokin. And largely when he was in the game from uh, Semyon Varlamov. But Look, Sorokin did not have as strong a defensive team in front of him. He certainly had less goal support. He faced more shots, faced more high danger chances. You can make a strong case that Ilya Sorokin deserved to win the award. But realistically, when you have the best save percentage, the best goals against average, and the most wins of any goalie in the league, you're going to win the trophy, whatever, you know, the, the Vezina trophy, 99 times out of 100. And when you remember that the voting was done after the regular season ended, but before the playoffs started, so the poor playoff performance by Olmark doesn't even matter when it comes to figuring out this vote. So congratulations to Anders Lee and Ilya Sorokin, both of them doing uh, a very good job and, and earn, they deserved to have, uh, you know, to be finalists for their respective awards. Hopefully, hopefully uh, Sorokin can win this award in the future. I think, you know, right now he's in the prime of his career. So it's very realistic that he could do that. But we have to see, uh, you know, what the future holds. And then, Again, for the King Clancy Award, I think it's just really a question of maybe Anders Lee continues to do what he does and gets a little recognition for that down the road. But both of them deserving of the honors they did get. And, you know, hopefully uh, they, they just deserve the recognition. We have got a lot more to get to on today's show. We will answer one of your questions about a potential 
blockbuster trade. We'll talk about that. And we'll have a scouting report and another potential player. The Islanders could draft 49th overall on Thursday. All that and more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And don't forget the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. And you can get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you get there. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL. You'll get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. After today's show, be sure to check out Locked On's 2023 NHL Mock Draft Special. The local hosts in the Locked On NHL channel have made their picks. And hosts Gil Martin and Hadi Kalakesh break down every selection over a three-day mock draft event. Find the episodes on the Locked On NHL feed on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Got to say it was a lot of fun doing that. I was uh, hosting it, and it, it really was some great analysis and a good overview of this draft coming up uh, starting on Wednesday and Thursday. So uh, make sure you check that out. So we have a question and this is a great email. Uh, This is from Mike in Japan. And uh, here's the, here's the email. Love the show. I live in Japan and your podcast keeps me feeling connected. This is painful to think about, but the best move the Islanders could potentially make would be to move Matthew Barzal for a top pair puck moving defenseman. Why? Because the Islanders can't function without a puck mover. They have five good centers. It frees up cap space, potentially gets a guy with years and good value. Barzal is amazing, but if you ask me, Nelson is a more valuable center on this team You only make this trade if you believe we can get to the Stanley Cup. Otherwise, I'd rather keep Barzal and at least enjoy watching him as we hover around third place every year. What I wouldn't give to go back and watch my favorite players and their careers as Islanders, you know the list all too well. Guys, we all love the winning that uh, and the winning that never followed their departure. Thank you and very respectively. Mike living in Japan. First of all, Mike, thank you for the kind words about the podcast. I really do appreciate it. There's a lot to break down here. Uh, Let's start with this. Let's talk about the cap hit. Uh, You trade Matthew Barzal. You better do it soon because he does have a no trade clause that's going to kick in uh, pretty darn soon. So let, let, let's start with that. But he has a $9.15 million cap hit. And he's got a lot of years left on his deal. He is 26 years old. He is one of the few players on this Islander team with speed and who can really lug the puck, carry the puck, be dangerous, skating with the puck. He's not a sniper. He's not a great goal scorer. He, at best, is probably a 20 to 25 goal a year guy. But assist-wise, he can get you to a point a game, especially if the Islanders were not playing that tight defensive system. Here's the other thing, however. uh, And for me, it's this. Your caveat was like, you know, yeah, you free up cap space, but if we're not going to have a chance at the Stanley Cup, 
don't make this deal. Uh, let, let's even say you go bonkers. Let's say for some reason, and I know this is not realistic, but let's say you make a deal with the Sharks, Matthew Barzal for Carlson. 100 points last year. Elite defenseman, puck moving defenseman, cap hit even maybe slightly higher than Matthew Barzal. And let's even say, arguably, that Carlson, you know, the Sharks are willing to take uh, a million or a million and a half of Carlson's cap hit to even up the cap differential between Barzal and Carlson. Your question was, you, you said, you only make this deal if it means you can win the Stanley Cup. And I mean, would a deal like that improve the Islanders' power play? Yes. Would a deal like that help the Islanders transition from defense to offense? Probably cut down on those long, long amount of, you know, stretches that they spend in their own zone? Yeah, probably would. But you still need that goal scorer. And you wouldn't have the cap space to go out and do it unless you started making another trade. So to me, you know, I still think that this deal, I, I don't think in and of itself, it gets us to a Stanley Cup. Does it make the team better? Probably. But does it make the Islanders one of the top, let's even say five or six Stanley Cup contenders in the NHL? No. Now, with a goalie like Ilya Sorokin, could the Islanders certainly finish higher in the standings if they made this trade? Maybe. Would they be better if Lula Morello is also able to make a few moves around Matthew Barzal? Yeah. But I, I think that in and of itself, dealing Barzal, even for Eric Carlson, who is the you know Norris Trophy winner, who is right now the best offensive defenseman in the NHL, according to 95% of all the scouts, I don't think it makes the Islanders Stanley Cup contenders right away. And for that reason, and the fact that I know that right after signing Barzal to this long contract extension, Lou Lamorello is not going to make that deal. Uh, I, I just don't think the Islanders will do it. It's I like the thinking. It's creative. I think that the Islanders do need to move a center to get a puck-moving defenseman and to free up some cap space to do that. But I, I don't think that they are going to make the move to trade Barzal. It wouldn't be Lou Lamorello's M.O., Let's put it that way. Uh, it's an interesting proposal. I like the thought process behind it. And I think that the Islanders need to be bold to shake things up and get this team out of the barely make or barely miss the playoffs. But uh, I just don't think it's going to realistically happen this offseason. So we'll see what it does. But boy, uh, Thank you so much for this email, Mike, in Japan. And I am really touched and, and pleased that you listen to or watch the podcast. And it helps you feel connected to home and to the Islanders and to everything else. So, Mike, thank you so much for being there and, and being an everydayer. And thank you for the question. Really good uh, to hear from you. All right, we have got more to get to on today's show. We will have a scouting report on Theo Lidstein. He is a uh, prospect that the Islanders may be able to draft this year in the second round with the 49th overall pick. We'll also have our Islanders birthday of the day, a popular tough guy who went on to work for the Islanders after his hockey career was over. We've got all that and a lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. 
So we continue our look at some players the Islanders may be interested in drafting. And today we take a look at defenseman Theo Lindstein, the 18-year-old Swede who is 6'1", 180 pounds. Uh, split time between two teams in Sweden, one in the junior league, one in the next level up. Had a combined three goals and nine points in 46 games was a plus three and had four penalty minutes. And, you know, it's interesting and it's always hard when you have 18-year-old players because the key is not just to see what they're doing now, but what they will project at at 21, 22, 25. Lidstein is a smooth kind of a player. He's a good skater. He is sound positionally and has a pretty good hockey IQ. But while he is sort of thinking the game ahead, he just hasn't been very productive offensively. Now, again, when you look at numbers in Sweden, the statistics tend to be lower offensively than they do in North America, in junior, in college, etc. But he's a good passer. He's got a decent shot from the point and he is responsible defensively which is always important when you're looking at you know guys you want to draft and i guess he's he's viewed as a solid two-way defenseman who if everything works out well for him maybe he's a second pair d-man otherwise he is a third pair d-man if, if uh, he makes the NHL. And look, he's got some leadership qualities. Uh, he was an alternate captain at Sweden's under 18 worlds. And that is certainly good. He's not flashy, but he's smart and positionally sound. He's not the most physical guy, but defensively, he knows how to get in position and make some kind of a play to break up a pass or, or a, a scoring attempt, and that is good. So you're not looking at a guy who's going to give you a lot of offense. That's not his game. But you are looking at a player who kind of fits what the Islanders want to do in that he is smart and he is also a, and reliable and that certainly helps. So Theo Lidstein, definitely a possibility for the New York Islanders. And it just becomes a question of whether or not they go with, uh, you know, the left-handed shot defenseman who will fortify the blue line, but again, is probably two, three years away minimum. And again, 6'1", but 180 pounds. You got to get that closer to 190 by the time he is 20 or 21 and, and is ready to move up to either the AHL or eventually the NHL. So Theo Lindstein, another player the Islanders certainly could be interested in come draft day if he's available with the 49th pick. And I've seen him ranked anywhere from the mid-30s up to 55 or 56 on different players' draft boards or different scouts or experts' draft boards. So he's in that range where the Islanders certainly could look for him. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. And today is the 49th birthday of former Islanders defenseman, Eric Cairns, 6'5", 220, big, rugged, tough defenseman, originally drafted by that other New York team, the Rangers, in the third round in 1992, and made his NHL debut in 96-97 with the Rangers, played two years with them, but joined the Islanders in 1998-99, and stayed with the team through the 2003-2004 season, 
after playing for the Islanders, was with the Florida Panthers and Pittsburgh Penguins. His career ended in nine in 2006, 2007, and after that, he did some work for the Islanders front office. Played 457 games in his NHL career, 10 goals, 42 points, and 1,182 penalty minutes. Topped 100 penalty minutes every even half season that he played with the Islanders, including 196 in his first full year in 1999-2000. Never scored more than two goals in a season with the Islanders and never scored 10 points in a season. But boy, was he tough and he loved to stick up for his teammates and played 13 of his 16 playoff games with the Islanders and had 28 penalty minutes in those games. We go back and look at one of his more memorable games as an Islander. November 23rd, 2001, a home game at the Old Barn. Islanders hosting the Toronto Maple Leafs. Curtis Joseph in goal for Toronto. Chris Osgood, the Wizard of Oz, in goal for the Islanders. And in this one, Eric Cairns gets an unassisted goal midway through the second period. It is the game winner as the Islanders beat the Maple Leafs by a score of 3-1. to one. And in this game, Eric Cairns has the goal. He is a plus one. It's on his only shot. And he plays 10 minutes and 42 seconds. And believe it or not, does not take a penalty. Chris Osgood, 24 saves in this one. Other Islander goals, Sean Bates and Michael Pekka. So, we want to wish a very happy birthday to big Eric Cairns, a good guy and a, a very respected Islanders tough guy. He is our Islanders birthday of the day. Thanks again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. We'll look at sort of a one more player that the Islanders could select with their second round pick. And we'll start to take a look at possibly some trades or some moves that we might look to have happen during day one of the draft. Even though the Islanders are not holding a first round pick, that doesn't mean that the team won't do something Wednesday night in Nashville. And we'll discuss some of the possibilities on tomorrow's show. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.